Good morning, Survivors. It's Angie. And today we're going to talk about sleep deprivation and how narcissists use it as a manipulation tactic. All right, let's get started. Coffee. Only uh, about a third of the size of my brain today. <laughs> so sleep, sleep deprivation as a manipulation tactic is confusing, um, but basically it is exactly what it sounds like. It's where the narcissist will routinely interrupt your sleep and or cause you to not sleep or or to sleep less than you should. Okay. Now the reason they do this <clears throat> is because it helps them to sort of keep you in control somehow uh, because they, you know, when you're tired, you're not quite as <laughs> effective as you would be otherwise, right? But there's more to it than that. Let's get through this. So I think the first thing that you should we should note here is that sleep is one of the most basic human needs. Okay. So it, it's right up there with water and food and like shelter and clothing and stuff. Um, but it's even more than that because, you know, of course, if you don't sleep long enough, you can literally die. And of course, most narcissists won't push you that far, but they will push you to the point that you lose the ability to be in control of your emotions and all the stuff like this. So because we all know a lack of sleep not only can cause us high blood pressure, to be overweight, to be, you know, unhealthy in many ways, but it can also cause us to become emotionally unstable. Now, isn't that exactly what a narcissist wants? I'm going to try to remember to link out to the video where I talk about the effects of sleep and how it can positively or negatively affect your life, right? But, you know, <clears throat> I think, in my opinion, the most profound reason that they do this is because they are able to, you know, you become so unstable um, emotionally, you know, just think about this. Think about a baby who hasn't felt well and hasn't gotten any sleep and that, oh, they're crying and they're fussy and they're cranky and all this stuff, right? Well, it kind of works the same way with us as adults, but we just need a little less sleep than babies, right? Sometimes, but, um, but you know, if we don't get a good six hours of sleep a night, at least six to eight hours, uh, we, we can you know, almost define ourselves in a constant state of confusion, depression, all these other things, and less healthy than we were before. So let's talk about the motivation here. In addition to obvious of manipulation, what other motivation could a narcissist have for trying to not let us sleep? I think one of the one of the primary motivations, I think, is the fact that uh, narcissists just don't have any consideration for anyone else. And so they don't care about the fact that you're not getting any sleep, right? Uh, but maybe they want to talk. Maybe they have an emotional need they need handled or, or they're mad and they need to fight or somebody else upset them and they're, you know, you're, you're the primary supply. So they're like, oh, let me get that, right? <laughs> so there are lots of reasons that narcissists would pull this particular trick on you. Of course, if you ask me, I think that most narcissists um, are doing it out, for, out of selfishness rather than out of um, a desire to abuse you. But then there are those who have such a deep and twisted anger within themselves or hatred with I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but they're so twisted that they will literally calculate the fact that, oh, if I don't let him or her sleep, they won't be as capable of handling stuff and they definitely won't be able to fight back with me as much as that. that. So then you're wondering, well, if you're not sleeping, are they also not sleeping? Well, maybe they're taking naps. Or, you know, who knows? There are lots of different ways that they will use this tactic and lots of different reasons they'll use it. Like I said, sometimes I don't think it's on purpose. Sometimes I think it's just that they're so selfish and lack so much empathy that they're just not able to see that it's not okay to wake a person up in the middle of the night or keep a person awake. Um, but then there are those who, who, who just know, and those are the dangerous ones. I think sometimes we could call some of those sociopaths. So how much sleep does anyone really need, right? Well, according to WebMD, um, which is my source for the day, <laughs> uh, no, you know, most adults require seven to eight hours. Most kids, depending on age, anywhere from 14, you know, eight, eight hours to 14 hours, depending on age. Because remember, sleep restores your body. Sleep teaches you or takes you. Uh, it's, it's a human need. It's a basic human need in order to survive. Okay. So what happens if we're not sleeping enough in, in addition to the things I said already? <laughs> Well, obviously, I've already mentioned the obesity factor, the fact that you can gain more weight this way, the fact that your blood pressure goes up, the fact that your body just doesn't function as well. And there are the psychological connotations such as depression, anxiety, confusion, things like this, right? Um, but 
they're also one, you know, there are also very, many emotional effects as we talked about. And ultimately the biggest thing is, you know, if you're out driving your car and you haven't slept, there's a, a bigger chance that you're going to hurt yourself or someone else. Um, you know, or if you're operating heavy machinery or whatever, whatever your job is, you might not do it as well if you're not getting enough sleep. And in some cases that can be a life or death situation, even if you're just a stay-at-home mom or dad. Also a significantly decreased memory issue um, and, and, and the ability to perceive things and notice things around you changes. So you might miss, you know, a red light or you might miss a sign or you might miss uh, you know, you, you just, you're not as awake and alert and aware. You're just not your full true self. Like I said, emotional abusers in general will use this tactic. So, you know, sometimes they might just be really loud after bedtime, play loud music or party or yell and scream at the TV. Sometimes they might, um, turn the light on in the room you're on and keep it on. Sometimes they might literally keep you awake arguing or wake you up with an argument. Um, sometimes they just might want attention and just refuse to let you go to sleep. Uh, it feels terrible. While it's happening, what does it feel like? Well, as we go to bed, as we go, you know, prepare to lay down for the night, our body starts to slow down and relax, and certain chemicals and hormones are released that that help us sleep. But if the sleep cycle and pattern is constantly interrupted, then those things go haywire, and we find ourselves feeling confused. We find ourselves um, feeling angry, irritable, frustrated, um, and it's just it's it's horrible for the victim. Narcissists can, of course, use this against us in order to further manipulate us and make us think that we're crazy. So yes, they bust some gaslighting into it too. It actually can work quite well in conjunction with gaslighting if we're talking about um, manipulation tactics. So what are you supposed to do about this? Well, first of all, you have to realize that sleep is a basic human need and you have a right to it, okay? Secondly, um, you know, as with any situation with a narcissist, the, the ideal situation is to go no contact. But if you're having to cope with it, you know, what do you do? Well, first of all, you can avoid engaging in arguments after a certain time of day, just like people who wet the bed have to stop drinking water after a certain time of day. Um, you can, um, you know, require, you know, make sure that you take time to do a bedtime routine and maybe try to put the narcissist on that or somehow separate them from that. Uh, that can help, but you have to protect yourself. You have to protect your sleep time. You have to, um, you know, sit down and tell this person, hey, sleep is important. I'm going to sleep. You have to prioritize your sleep. If you're in a situation where you literally are not allowed to sleep, well, you need to get out. Go stay at a hotel if you have to. Um, or, you know, a friend's house or anything. Take a nap during the day. Your sleep is important. You've got to prioritize it. It can literally kill you if you don't get enough sleep, okay? It makes you fatter makes you more confused, makes you less smart. Not that you're less smart, you just feel less smart because your body is, and your brain are trying to catch up with no sleep. It's too hard on your body, it's too hard on your soul. It, it's not okay, all right? So, do you know somebody who, who, who is causing sleep deprivation in your life? Have you experienced this manipulation tactic before? I just wanna remind you of one more thing before I close up today. It's really easy for us to forget how serious the abuse has really become in our lives. And a lot of us have a very high tolerance for abuse. I've talked about that before in videos. And so I don't want you to underplay this one, okay? Sleep, as I said, is, is truly a very basic need that we all have. It is a human need. It helps us to survive, okay? So if you're being deprived of sleep or if you're being manipulated and abused in other ways, do not allow that to continue in your life. You don't deserve it. You deserve better. You deserve to be happy. You, you deserve to be your full self every day if you want to, okay? And when you're not getting enough sleep and you're not and you're being emotionally abused and berated and treated horribly, you're not going to be your full self. You're going to be this shell that somewhere deep inside your yourself is, but your shell becomes hard and crusty sort of and it's hard to see yourself anymore after that. Does that make any sense? So please remember that you're worth it. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to have some freaking sleep, my friend, okay? You deserve to not be manipulated. You deserve to be treated like someone who is amazing and wonderful as you are. Because, my friend, despite the crap the narcissist has told you, you are amazing and wonderful, and you're not crazy, and you're not stupid, and you're not lazy. You're just someone amazing who's unfortunately being abused, okay? Or has been abused. 
So take it back. Take your life back. Take your identity back. And take your damn sleep back, okay? So the final coping tactic I want to offer you before I close up for today is this. If you are in a situation where you're being regularly deprived of sleep, take some time and sit down with the person and say, I will be going to bed at this time every night. There will be no interruption of my sleep. Sleep is very important. It's going to kill me if we don't get some sleep. So then you tell them, like, say you want to go to bed by 10 o'clock. Well, you tell them it's 930. And this way you've got a little padding there, right? And um, you just, you make it a routine. You make it a regular thing. If the person is so controlling that that's not allowed to happen, you need to go, my friend. You're being even more abused than you realize. All right. All right. I'm going to wrap it up for now. Um, I will see you later today for another video or two, and I hope you all have a wonderful Friday. Um, if you have questions, comments, concerns, leave them below. Otherwise, um, let's talk soon. Thanks for having coffee with me today, guys. See you soon. And as always, thanks for letting me be a part of your life and a part of your day. And hey, thanks for being a part of mine. It's really important to me. See you soon.